I, this is a demo of an Excel-based add-in for power and parametric, ca parametric CAD systems. This demo is using Autodesk Inventor. So we'll start by automating a simple part. So we're going to use a tool to actually go and build out the template for us to get started with. So what you get for generating that template is a list of list of commands and the documentation on what each of those commands do. Then those commands are populated in a dropdown, which then you can use as instructions to pass to the CAD system. So in this case, we're going to make a simple part and show you how it works. So we'll start by just copying this up here. Um, for a simple part, we actually don't need to even specify top-level name. That's more useful in complicated assemblies, and I'll do a demo of that after we get done with this. So we'll go and make a simple square. And we'll give it a 10, 10. Extrude it. All right, so now we're going to go into our manage, into our FX parameters. And now we can see we have D0 at 10, D1 at 10, and D2 at 1. So what we can do is just and type those out real quick. And we'll say that this is going to be equal to 12 now. And what we can then do is just copy both those down. And we'll say this one's D2, and this one's D, um, sorry, this one's D1, this one's D2. We'll set that to 24, that one to 25, or let's say 2 for thickness. Okay, now we'll go and build that out. And it's actually going to save us because at the end the program always saves. And we'll just say part test. So, in a quick simple, so this is a good demo showing how we can quickly automate a simple part. And then what you're allowed, then you can, we can always change all our sizes here. And you can, in Excel, you can just drag this down. And if you wanted to make a custom input form here, you could. Like if you wanted to say length, width, thickness, and we'll just say 24, 24, 2. And we'll just go and name those real quick. And now, with some quick easy steps, we've actually created ourselves a little input form that we can actually drive our CAD animation through Excel with. And also, if you'd like, we can also create properties, too. Or now go through some more complicated uh, assembly features. So now that we've got our dimensions set, let's say we want to set a property. Let's say we want to set description equals a tool. So we can actually do that again if we wanted to. We could say description tool. And we're gonna we'll go and name that again. We'll say this is equal to description. And we'll just say this equals description. So we'll go and run that again. And we can now go and check and make sure. And our description's been set. So one thing that often happens, we need to set a bunch of custom properties. Let's go and take a look at what that involves. So let's say, we want to say this is our product number. We'll say it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll just can go and make a couple of these. We'll say this one's a uh, code. We'll say this is ABC. Now we'll go and say this one is um, my number. And we'll say that's uh, 212. Oh, 212. So we'll go and do that real quick. And now we've also, and now we've populated our custom properties. Since those don't exist in the base property sets, they'll be automatically added to your custom. And it will automatically create those for you if they don't exist. And if we decided to go and change those now, we can go and say this is equal to B12345, or 4. Run it again. 
That's all updated. So what imagine you could imagine if you had a large Excel table already driving certain custom properties in your parts, you could use this to feed that in or even do mass property sets. It depends on your specific use case. Because we can see in Base Inventor, if we wanted to add a custom property, we would go in here and say, my, my code, add, and set the value to value. Which isn't inefficient, but I do believe this is easier. So, now our next step, we should be looking at what can we do, like I said, if we had features in our part. So let's go and say feature activity. And let's go and create a feature. Let's go and let's go and make that a through all cut. So now we have a feature called extrusion two. So let's go and do, grab that extrusion two, and we're going to set it to. So in our command sheet, we had these two here that represent suppression. So you can either write s or u. It's up to you. Or we can come in up here and set data validation. And we're going to say it's a list. And it's equal to suppression. So now we have some data. Let's go and suppress it. And we'll go back to our ribbon tab. We'll build that out. No, that's gone if we didn't need it. And now we can turn it back on. So if you have a huge amount of logic driving a huge amount of different suppression, this can be pretty handy. Because we often have features that are based on certain product lines, and you could turn this into a simple CPQ for, uh, for your project now. And we'll get into a into our more complicated assembly, into a more complicated assembly to show some of the other commands. So what we'll do is we'll go and close this sheet. And what we'll do is we'll open a We'll open this model for a small pressure vessel. So what we'll do then, and so let's go and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and adjust everything out. We'll go to our table, and let's say we're going to make this 400 by 20. Let's go back. So how this ends up working is this would be our main sheet our main block to get started. So we would have top level name infers that this is the model we'll have open. One advantage of doing this, if your active model in Inventor or an Inventor does not match this, you'll get an error. And this helps prevent your users from manipulating the wrong model. And then we can start setting our parameters. So the same concept again. And these are all coming from equations. So we can go in, look, and have Excel will highlight where those calculations are coming from. You, then you can go see where everything's coming from. And our next step would be looking at what you want these subs to do. So what the subs are are sub blocks that are executed at, after each. They'll be executed after this build. And how they work is when you call it sub, the program is given this name, which is a range. So if we go back to command here, this is that same name there. So the program will go down here, run everything inside this block. Then once it finishes there, it'll come back up here, look and find this block. So this allows you to organize these blocks into separate segments to make it a bit more readable. And then you can do you know, your normal Excel grouping to make everything nice and neat. And then we're allow, and you're allowed to make comments that will allow you to if you have a bunch of similar things or you need some documentation on why we why you had to do this. And there's an example of setting constraints. And we're setting properties again. This time we're specifying a flange property. So advantage of using in a complicated example like this, you could think of this as an extraction from a SQL data source or even 
if you're just using Excel as your primary data source, you could copy this in, then use it to feed. And this would be an example of using a calculation tables where you could just do VLOOKUPs against these tables to find the values that you need to drive everything. And this would be an example of importing a larger table which specifies how a flange, all the various data for a flange. And as we go through and look through that, so imagine that table, so if you look at that table we had imported, so now we can go through and see all of our, we're just indexing that table. So we can use an index to go look at that table. And in this case, we wanted the two blink. So we'll say cool data table, and we're looking for the column called two blink. Then we'll do a match. So we're gonna find the match that has the selected job number and the, and the cool number. And then you'll have a cool data number with job number. And then, yeah. So then we're saying that we're looking for the row that matches the job number and the cool number. And then we specify zero it means an exact match and for match. But so this a pretty powerful tool now that we can use just using the power the power of index and match. And and then you can build up constants and also standard V lookups work just for uh Index and match tends to be more powerful. So this is just an example. I wanted to show that the only limit would be just the ability to go out and plan everything out. So now we'll do a demo build of this to show that it does actually do something. Oh, you can see now our, all of our commands are being pushed into the model. So everything's being resized and rebuilt. And each step is ran in the sequence. So it starts just going down line by line and executing each branch. So you, as you'll see, when you see it build, you'll see it building in the order you gave it. So that's pretty quick build time. So, and this can be used as complicated as fully automating one of your units to as simple as giving the ability to drive parameters using tools like VLOOKUPs. So if you just wanted to have a bunch of uh, equations inside your model that you needed more access to to drive through tables, I mean, this would give you the ability to just kind of give you a simpler, not give you an option not to have to go to program or not go to, or a complicated uh, I part or I assembly arrangement and just use tech, and just use tooling you already had built in Excel. Well, thank you.